let's look at a 39 year old male who first came to medical attention because a systolic murmur was heard at the age of 15. So we always start with the parasternal long axis view. And immediately just looking at this view, it is quite clear that the patient has significant left ventricular hypertrophy, especially of the interventricular septum. And we also have an abnormal motion of the mitral valve. We have a systolic motion towards the interventricular septum, which occludes the LVOT right here, which is indicative of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. There's a number of other findings we can see. First of all, we have a fairly speckled appearance of the interventricular septum. We also have a thickened endocardium here in the region of the LVOT due to the turbulent flow, and also a thickened anterior mitral leaflet. It's also apparent that the patient has enlarged left atrium and good systolic function. Let's turn to the short axis view. In this view, we can see the pattern of left ventricular hypertrophy with the hypertrophy especially prominent in the region of the interventricular septum, not as much in the remaining portions. We also see here at the level of the mitral valve, the SAM phenomena again with the systolic motion towards the LVOT septum and also with motion of the posterior leaflet which follows the anterior leaflet. So there's a distortion of the mitral valve. This can also be seen in the M mode. Market left ventricular hypertrophy, we can quantify hypertrophy here, probably somewhere in the range of 31 millimeters. I would also perform this measurement in 2D just to confirm the thickness of the septum. Here we have over 30 millimeters. And then I would turn to the four chamber view, to the apical position, and again, look at the extent and severity of left ventricular hypertrophy. You see that the septum is most prominently hypertrophied, maybe the apex not as much, and certainly not the lateral wall. Here in the two chamber view, we see the inferior wall is also thickened, and the anterior wall, we see that there is echogenic structures here in the septum, probably due to fibrosis. And then if we look at the apical long axis view, we also see the sand phenomena here and the pattern of left ventricular hypertrophy. It's very nice to see here how the posterior leaflet is also distorted and how uh, the mitral valve becomes incompetent here it's the regurgitant jet due to the distortion of the mitral valve. We'll then look at the color to assess the obstruction. You can see there is turbulent flow here in the LVOT but not only there, but also here in the mid portions of the ventricle. So this shows that the patient also has mid ventricular obstruction. And this can also be appreciated if we perform post wave Doppler and just gradually move the transducer into the region of the mid ventricular obstruction. You can see the obstruction down here. This is the obstruction. And then move the transducer further down towards the LVOT. And then you will see all of a sudden a jump in the gradient. All of a sudden we have a, an even higher velocity, which is outside the aliasing borders. So we are now in the LVOT where the second side of obstruction is. We can then quantify the LVOT obstruction, and I'll show you the signals that uh, we have recorded. This is the LVOT obstruction with the maximal velocity of approximately four meters. 
And we can also see that within this signal, we have a second signal. This is the signal here of the LVOT obstruction, of the midventricular obstruction. Furthermore, we also have mitral regurgitation, which is probably moderate, as we will see in the following views. This is the four-chamber view. Very difficult to here really visualize the vena contracta or the proximal acceleration of the jet. But in summary, if we look at all the views, regurgitation is probably moderate. It is sometimes difficult to assess the LVOT velocity because of this regurgitant jet. Sometimes we can mistaken the LVOT velocity by the continuous wave velocity of the mitral regurgitation. And I will show you a signal which displays you the regurgitation and also the LVOT velocity. This is this spectrum here. And what you can nicely see here is that we have three different spectrums within one. We have the mitral regurgitation spectrum here, which starts very early with the QRS complex. We have the LVOT obstruction, which is here. And we have the midventricular obstruction, which can be seen here. So finally, all we have to look at is diastolic function. We do that by using the post-wave Doppler spectrum. We can see that the A wave is taller than the E wave, so we have impaired relaxation. If we measure the maximum velocity, we get 0.8. And if we then perform the tissue doppler of the mitral annulus, we'll do that at the medial ring here. We can then measure E prime, which is 0.5, so we have an E to E ratio of 16, which means that the patient has, has elevated left atrial filling pressures. And to sum up this patient, let's look at the heart chambers. We have a normal size of the left ventricle. We can measure the size, which is 49 millimeters. The right ventricle is also of normal size. Furthermore, we can measure the left atrium, which is significantly enlarged, and also the right atrium, which is mild to moderately enlarged. And in conclusion, we can therefore say that the patient has hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy with gradients both in the mid-cavity and the LVOT with a maximal gradient in the LVOT of approximately 64 millimeters mercury, and also with impaired diastolic function, impaired relaxation, with elevated left atrial filling pressures, enlarged atria, and um, probably moderate mitral regurgitation.